How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donnie here again. This time we're going to take a look at some practice problems for 15.1, the concept of equilibrium and the equilibrium constant. So our objectives explain what equilibrium is and what conditions must be met in order for it to exist. Determine the proper equilibrium constant expression given a balanced chemical equation. Calculate the values for KQ given equilibrium values of reactants and products and then use that equation, KP equals KC times RT to the delta N to convert between KP and KC. All right, number one. So at equilibrium, which one of these statements is true? Uh, have chemical reactions stopped? No, they have not stopped. There is still the forward process. There's also the reverse process, and they are balanced. And that's what equilibrium is. They're balanced. Uh, the equilibrium constant is zero. That is also a false statement. That It's never going to be zero. Uh, there's products and reactants. So when we're talking about the KEQ, uh, you know, you have like the concentration of the products to whatever its exponent is divided by the uh, concentration of the reactants to whatever its exponent is. Uh, this will never be zero. In order to be zero, the products would have to be equal zero and then you wouldn't have an equilibrium. Right. So B is not true. The limiting reagent has been used up. That is not true. At equilibrium, there should be reactants and products. Nothing should be used up. The rate constant of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. That is not true. The constants, the rate constants don't need to be equal. What it is is the rates of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. So at equilibrium, the rates are equal. Two, what does the Habert process produce? The short answer is ammonia. Right, this is like the go-to example equilibrium. It's the N2 reacting with 3H2 giving us um, NH3, which is an equilibrium with the reverse process. And all of these are gases. If I'm going to be a good chemist, I'm going to include the phases for all those things too. So that is the Haber process. Number three, which of the following will change the value of an equilibrium constant? All right, if we add an inert substance that are not involved in an equilibrium, not going to affect it. If it, it's not chemically reacting, it, it might as well not be there. Uh, changing the temperature, yeah. If we change the temperature, the value will change. Uh, the number for that KEQ will, will change. The constant expression doesn't change, but the value for it will. Uh, changing the initial concentrations of products won't change the value. Changing the initial concentration of the reactions won't. And changing the volume of the reaction container, no. None of those things will affect the equilibrium constant value. All right, number four, what is the equilibrium constant expression for the equilibrium between dinitrogen tetroxide and nitrogen dioxide? So uh, let's see. KEQ, let's say it's going to be in terms of pressure because these are both gases, so I could use pressure. Kp equals the pressure of the product, which is NO2, to the power of whatever its coefficient is when it's bounced, so squared, divided by the pressure of the reactants, N2O4. And hey, the coefficient is 1, so I could just leave it as is. So this would be the Kp, right? And if I want to do like Kc in terms of concentration, it's, it's going to be the same thing, except instead of the pressures, you're using the concentration. So... Um, with the way this is worded, it is a little vague, so either one would be good. Five, what is the equilibrium constant expression for the equilibrium below? All right, so again, I got all gases, so I could use the Kp, uh, but I'll, you know, yeah, let's just use the Kp then. So the pressure of the product, the product being the CH3OH to whatever its coefficient is, so there's a one there, divided by the pressure of the reactants. So one of them is CO2, coefficient of one, times... Uh, the pressure of H2, which is going to get squared. I usually put parentheses around things that have an exponent with pressures because it gets a little confusing what that number is doing there. And with the parentheses, you know, like, hey, all of this is getting squared. All right, number six, the Kp expression for the reaction below is what? So again, it's uh, just a matter of, hey, Kp equals the pressure of the product. So I got O2 is my only product, and it's getting cubed because of that three, divided by the pressure of the reactants, in this case O3, which is going to get squared because its coefficient in front of that is a two. That's it. All right, seven, given the equilibrium below, there it is. Equilibrium cannot be reached when blank is placed in a closed container. So if we're trying to create an equilibrium, we need 
to start with either all of the reactants or all of the products in order to get both a forward and reverse process. So let's see, they're saying, hey, we put N2 and O2 in a container. Those are both reactants. So if I were to uh, put them in a container, then I'd be able to do the forward reaction, which means I'd make NO3, which means I'd be able to do the reverse reaction. So this would be able to make equilibrium. All right, what about NO2 and NO3? Well, hey, NO3 is my only product. So if I start with that, I'll be able to do the reverse process, which means I can make the forward process happen as well. What if it was just O2 and NO3 again? Hey, I have NO3 that is all of my products, so I can get the reverse reaction, which means I will also be able to get the forward reaction. Uh, NO2, ooh, if it's just NO2, there's no O2 to react to make NO3, so this will not be able to create equilibrium. And then, hey, one mole of NO3, again, NO3 is my only product, so I have all of my product, I'd be able to create an equilibrium. So the question which cannot uh, reach equilibrium, choice D. All right, eight, the equilibrium constant expression depicts, or, or I'm sorry, depends on the blank of the reaction. The expression here, not the value, but the constant expression does not depend on the amounts of reactants and pro products present originally. Um, both coefficients of the reactants and mechanism, no, this and mechanism part makes this a false statement. Coefficients of the reactants and products, that is true. It does depend on that. Uh, the mechanism does not depend on the mechanism. doesn't matter what's, what those steps are, just what is the equilibrium before and after. And then temperature, well, temperature will affect the value, what the actual number is, but not the expression. All right, nine, given the following equilibrium at 300 K, if the pressure of CO2 equals that many atmospheres, what is the KC? All right, so this might be getting a little head thinking about it. So when we do the, the KP, uh, solids, pure solids and liquids will, will cancel out, will drop out. So really this is just gonna be the pressure of CO2. Um, and we know that we got this equation, KP equals KC times RT delta N. So my KP is just this point zero two two five, and I'm trying to solve for KC. So if I rearrange it, I get my KC equals KP divided by RT times delta N. The delta N is how uh, the number of gases have changed on the left side versus the right side. So on the left side, I have no gases, but on the right side, I have one. So my delta N is equal to one. So now I can just kind of plug and chuck. I go, hey, KC equals my KP, which is at 0 0.0225, divided by R, which is at 0 0.08206 liter atmosphere mole Kelvin times the Kelvin. Well, it told me 300 Kelvin. And then all of that is to the one power because of my delta N. So now I pick up my handy dandy calculator, beep bop, beep bop, boop, and I get uh, 0 0.000914, or if you do it in scientific notation, 9.14 times 10 to the minus 4 as my answer for that one. All right, the following equal, uh, reaction is at equilibrium. If those are the pressures, Kp equals this. Again, I kind of, you know, maybe I could find better examples, but solids drop out. So my Kp expression is really just going to be the pressure of NH3 times the pressure of H2S. So now I can just plug and chuck. I go, hey, both of those pressures are 0 0.605, so times point, or 0 0.605, and I plug and chug, and I end up with 0 0.366, okay? Um, yeah, I hope you found that helpful. See you in class, goodbye. Okay,